Life should be fun, so let's play. Hey, hey, what up? It's old Kenny here with you for a brand new edition of the Kenny Ho Gaming Show. And today we're going to have a look at the creator player for APB Reloaded, which was made available a couple of weeks ago on the PSN store. It's free to play. So let's have a look at what this bad boy's capable of. Sanparo, your city and it needs your help. That's what the City Security Act is all about. Giving us the power to become enforcers and defend our city. We know it's rough out there, so you'll be licensed for the full use of force. Lethal or non-lethal. The choice is yours. You can operate however suits you best. Working with contacts on the street or dealing with criminals your own way. Wherever and however you see them breaking the law. As an enforcer, performance is everything. Be careful, though. We're here to make the streets safer for decent people, not more dangerous. And don't forget, organizations like the Praetorians and the Prentice Tigers make useful allies. Their street-side operatives provide support and supplies to friends and associates. Getting to know these contacts may be the key to surviving as an enforcer. CSA licensed enforcers. Doing something today to ensure a safer San Paolo tomorrow. So as I was saying, this thing came out on the PS4 a couple of weeks ago. That's not to say that it's a new game, it's actually a very old game, came out in 2010, so this sucker's 7 years old. But you know what, it's free to play, so you don't have to put any money into it if you don't want to. But to be fair, at this point, uh, I haven't played in about a week, I got it a few days after it came out. And I gotta tell you, at times, virtually unplayable. It's so laggy, it's so bad. Like if they ever fix that, you get a couple of friends to play with you, I think you can have a good time. It's like a free, I don't want to say GTA 5 online because it's not even close to that, but it kind of feels like GTA 3.5. It looks a little bit better than GTA 3, but not as good as 4, so that's what this kind of feels like to me. And for a free game that you can play with your friends, with a lot of customization, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. I gotta say, it's a pretty good deal, but for now, I find it unplayable. Doesn't matter how good you are at shooters or at GTA. It basically boils down to when it starts lagging, is your gun pointed in the right direction? But if you're interested, maybe do what I did and just get it. It's not a big file, I think it's like 10 gigs. It won't take up too much space. And just create your guy, create your character. And that's what drew me to this game. And that's what you're looking at today is the customization, the creative player specifically. This thing is crazy. The amount of detail that you can adjust is amazing. If you watch my Creative Rider video a few weeks ago, you know, Mass Effect Andromeda, that thing cost me like $90 Canadian or something. It was expensive, and I said, I wasn't impressed by the, the Creative Player tool. It was okay. I found a guy that kind of looked like me, so I was able to shape him to look more like me. But if you don't luck out like that, you're gonna be playing a game for like 100 hours with a dude who looks nothing like you. Which is fine, except you're trying to make a dude who looks like you. It really doesn't make sense to me that a game that came out in 2010, this one here, and is free to play, has a creative player that is so much better than a full AAA title that I paid full price for. It's kind of crazy. And I've used a lot of creative player tools, that's one of my favorite things to do, hence what the channel is really being built upon these days. And I gotta say, APB, the game can't really play it, but this creative player, frackin' brilliant. Like, this is on par with uh, Skyrim, Fallout. In fact, I would say it's better than those. It's not quite as good as like Sims 3 or Sims 4, but you can talk about those games, there's things these guys do that those guys don't. You can edit how tall or short you are, which is something you can't do in The Sims. So what I'm trying to get at here is this is a really, really good and deep character creator. I only wish the game were better, or at least playable at this point.
And now you're gonna see something here. I was kind of a dum dum here. I thought there was a limitation here that wasn't actually the case. I figured that the camera had to be pulled back like this. So as you can see, I spent like half of it trying to adjust my player's look from a full body view. And that's not the case. You can actually, if you look at the bottom right hand corner there, there's an option to switch camera and you can get an up close to the face. And I thought about redoing it at some point. But as I said, I was already halfway through. I'm like, you know what? Life's too short. And it's kind of funny anyway, so I left it in. A couple more things I wanted to point out was I actually had to pare this video down quite extensively. I actually had to exclude a lot of the content, a lot of the options that are available to you because there's so much of it, it's so deep. We'd be here all day if I didn't do that. And as you'll see at the end, you can actually even name your guy. You can name him or her whatever you want, except that uh, you're not allowed to have doubles in the world, so if somebody's already Kenny Ho, you can't be named Kenny Ho. But I love this character creation, I wish every single game had something this deep. It's too bad right now the gameplay is... Well, you can't really play it because it lags so much, I can't even really comment on the gameplay because I haven't really done too much of it. So if you're into character creation yourself and you want to make someone maybe not look like you, maybe look like someone you have in mind, maybe a celebrity or something, I think this tool is so strong that you're going to be able to do it. We'll talk next time on the Kenny Ho Gaming Show. Take care.